I don't see what all the argument is about. Freddy, you do the sugar, please. Righto. Personally, I never holiday in France anymore. The water is quite undrinkable. Oh, and as for the postcard, well, Freddy has already admitted that he stole it. And now he's paid the price. Ooh. Oh, it's very bitter. But I... No buts, dear boy. I know what your wife was hinting at. <coughs> Good heavens. But I haven't put the poisoned lump in yet, Mrs. R. Speak up, Freddy. Can't hear your lines back here. I said, I haven't put the poisoned lump in yet, Mrs. R. Now, Mrs. Robinson, do try not to drop dead until you've been done in, dear. Well, Sally, she must have fainted. I've been telling her she was doing too much, but she wouldn't listen. Cynthia, pour the tea back in the pot and we'll go back to the top of the scene. Here, yeah, do you mean we've got to drink it cold, then? Mrs. Flowers, you'll never get into the Royal Shakespeare Company with remarks like that. And now, where is the butler going? Sergeant Grimes! I'm just going off to phone local police headquarters. Why, are they good with smelling salts and aspirin? No, but they're pretty good at murder. Mrs. Robinson is as dead as a doornail. What? What? Get... Thank you and welcome back to Who Done It, where we're going to try and work out who killed Mrs. Robinson or rather Lady Frost. Uh, they're both the same person, you see. And if you don't see, don't panic, neither do I. However, I do know that this is a dress rehearsal for a local village play, which means that everybody will have two characters the one they're portraying in the play and their real life position in the village of Smallfront. And I should add that Smallfront has nothing to do with Six Mile Bottom, which is a village on the New Market Road. <laughs> Now, in a moment, we'll see the rest of the police investigation and the suspects will give their version of the truth in memory flashbacks, always remembering that the murder or murderess will probably lie, so don't believe everything that you see. Afterwards, all the suspects will be questioned by our panel, and this week, if you're wondering whether we have a beautiful lady, yes, honestly, we do, Lisa Goddard. <laughs> And a gentleman who was first known as one of our great comedians, but has now become one of our leading actors, Jimmy Jewell. <laughs> and for those of you who think that you're not being served properly, we have Trevor Bannister. <laughs> now this week, our TV Times competition winner is a fireman from Guildford. Will you welcome Philip Atkins? Right then, let's get on with the rest of the story. Now, I advise you not to look at the play acting too much. It's simply atrocious. But one clue that I can give you is that the butler probably didn't do it because he is the village constable, or to be more precise, Sergeant Grimes. I suppose the old girl's heart must have given out. Never was much good, according to Dr. Bluebrook. Mind you, he wasn't much good either. She was poisoned, Mr. Robinson. What? I'll stake my stripes on it. Question is, how? Mr. Smith, what did you do with the poison sugar lump in the play? Well, you were there. I didn't even get time to put it in a cup. That I do know. What I don't know is, where is it now? Well, it's... Well, it, it's not here. It must be... Oh, yes, I remember. I put it back in the sugar bowl. Are all British postmen so forgetful? Well, they all look the same to me. Have to have Manoloys later. I tell you what, why don't we all just lick one and then whoever doesn't feel very well has presumably found it. Mr. Feeling, you may be directing this play, but I'm in charge of these preliminary inquiries. Now, I think we can safely assume that something on this trolley was the cause of death. Well, we must all have been near it at some time or other. Hmm. And funny enough, Sergeant, you were the last person to see the trolley off stage. Remind me. Towards the end of Act Two, I'm on stage taking Aaron orders from Lady Fox. And all that sort of rubbish. But I can't think why you don't just shoot the fox instead of all that dressing up. Mr. Sport, my dear, 
country sport. I can't help agreeing with her ladyship on this. Oh, thank you, Freddy. Five past four. Mary, go and ask James when tea will be ready. Yes, my lady. I can't think why you bother to come down here at all if you don't like fox hunting. Oh, do stop reading into things, Bertie. This very good kid. Freddy is a charming way. Always well. Sergeant. Thank you. Hey, that's very well, seeing as we're using real tea for this dress rehearsal, I, I thought I'd better make sure the cups were clean. How's Mr. Fielding why? taking it, I wonder? Uh, what, what I don't know, I haven't looked. Uh, you know, I was hoping to do a spot of fishing. Well, he hasn't fallen asleep oh, yet, has he? Why not? Watch out, the queue's coming up. So you see, Sergeant, you were the last person to touch the trolley. And you also provide me with an alibi. Possibly. Now let me think back a bit. The tea trolley started over on that side, didn't it? That's right, because that's where the cupboards and the gas ring are, and that's when the tea is made and the prop biscuits are kept. But who brought it over to this site? Oh, that's an incident I shall never forget. Happened in the previous scene, on Mrs. Flower's exit. Well, I suppose we'd better get ready for dinner. Good idea. Uh, Liz, darling, you nip on ahead and have first crack at the bar. Oh, all right. But don't be long, Freddy. Of course not, darling. Mrs. Flowers, if you go out that way, you will find yourself in the hall. We've already established that your bedroom is in the wing on that side, so please... Oh, sorry. I wasn't thinking. Sorry. At last, alone. We haven't much time. Shall we meet in town the same time next Wednesday? Of course, my love, but we must be careful. Am I interrupting anything? Oh, no, no, not really. I was just looking at Freddy's signet ring. It's rather unusual. A bull with laurel rampant. Rampant, eh? Now, Bertie, stop trying to read into things. Freddy was just keeping me company while his devoted wife was... I cannot act with all that damn noise going on. What the hell is going on back there? Oh, oh, oh I'm sorry. It's just me and Cynthia pushing the trolley round to be ready for the next scene. Well, lift it. Don't wheel it on that wooden floor. So that's how I knew Mrs. Flowers had been near the trolley, if it's of any help. Thank you, Mr. Fielding. And after you carried it across, Mrs. Flowers? Well, then I went back round to the other side again. Leaving Cynthia alone with the trolley. So where were you at the time, Sergeant? I was round the back on the phone to my wife. Oh, you'll never get into the Royal Shakespeare Company either. Probably not. But I had no motive to murder Mrs. Robinson. The rest of you did. Oh, now, look, one of the benefits of my job is I pick up all the village gossip. Like the ta there's talk of embezzlement in your bank, Mr. Robinson. Well, well, how do you know about that? Yeah, never you mind. But supposing you, the manager, was trying to cover it up, and your wife knew about it. Really? Or your head clerk, our director, Mr. Feeling. Perhaps he embezzled, and Mrs. Robinson found out about it. <laughs> Ridiculous. But possible. Fred, you've been seen out a lot with Mrs. Flowers lately. Suppose Mrs. Robinson was going to tell your husband. My wife would Your wife like probably that. found out about you and young Cynthia. Now, look here. She knew all right, nosy Parker. Yes, she did. But she also knew that I wasn't going to see Cynthia anymore. What? As a matter of fact, I told her at the side of the stage just before we started that last scene. What exactly do you think you're doing, Basil? What? Oh, uh, I was just tidying up the trolley for your tea pouring bit, dear. How very thoughtful of you, dear. Your guilty conscience is showing. Look, there's no need to start about Cynthia again. If it, well, if it's any consolation, after this show, I'm not going to see her anymore. Why? Have you found another little bit already? Oh, don't be melodramatic. It's bad enough having to watch her overacting on stage. My overacting? 
Mr. Fielding has been agreeing with me all week that this play would be far better without you. I refuse to be reviewed by my own head clerk. And you're evading the issue. If I catch you once more with another little bit, I'll sue you for such a beastly messy divorce that you'll be lucky to end up as a head clerk yourself. The bank doesn't like scandals. All right, darling, you've made your point. It won't happen again. Oh, and stop fussing about with that handkerchief. No wonder Mr. Fielding thinks you're over the top. Right, everybody, places, please, for the death scene. Just remember what I've told you. And then I join the rest of you here on the stage for the death scene. Well, I do think you might have told me, too. It could have saved a lot of trouble. Possibly. Of course, it does mean that you and I have one thing in common, Mr. Robinson. What's that? Neither of us have a motive. Right. Providing, of course, that what you've told me is true. Well, of course it's true, and I've got a witness, my wife. Well, she's dead. <laughs> Welcome back to Who Done It, where you're trying to work out who killed Mrs. Robinson and Lady Frost at the same time. And I'm trying to work out if a boy from Small Front married a girl from Six Mile Bottom. No, on second thoughts, I've decided not to try and work it out. <laughs> now, don't jump to any conclusions because the story isn't over yet. So let's rejoin Sergeant Grimes as he tries to unravel the clues from the Red Herrings. Oh, he just thought of something. Surely somebody could have done the damage between scenes. Well, I was standing by the trolley most of the time between the last two scenes, and no one came near enough. And remember, I have no motive. By the way, didn't you leave the stage at some time? Yes, but that was earlier on, two scenes back after our arrival. How nice of you to come. Don't worry about your cases. Je James will take them up the back stairs. Certainly brought the good weather with you. What? <laughs> oh, oh, yes, indeed. Oh, Freddy, the present. Of course. I'll go and get it. I remember where the room is from last time. So don't move. The place is full of amateurs. Mr. Smith? Yes? Would you mind shutting the door, not slamming it? Sorry. Better? Yes. Good. And I stayed outside that door till my next entrance. What is more, you and Cynthia are over there, so I couldn't have crossed. Mm, very true. But at that stage, the trolley was in the scullery on your side. Well, I didn't know that. Mm. Well, I think we're almost through. The only gap now is... What happened when we brought the tea in during the death scene? Let's just go back to where Cynthia and I made our entrance. Come. You wanted me, my lady? Oh, yes, James. Isn't tea ready yet? Whenever you wish it, my lady. Good. We'll have it now. Uh, but will you and Mary set up the side tables before you go? Very good, my lady. It's the one thing I missed on the Riviera. Afternoon tea. I don't know. I always rather enjoyed an afternoon pano myself. What? <laughs> <laughs> Which probably accounts for the reason that you were always drunk before dinner. Ruth, well, please. Pardon, bon les domestiques. Oh, don't be so silly, Bertie. There's nothing one can't hide from our James. Is there, James? Pardon, my lady? Well, almost nothing. How long has James been with you? <laughs> he comes with the freehold. <laughs> 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 Thank you, James. We'll have the tea on now. 
Oh, by the way, did you send a picture postcard of this house to Freddie while we were in France? I thought I saw one in the mail one day. Not that I know of. Uh, no. Uh, that was a card I pinched the last time I was here. <laughs> I must owe you 5p for that. 10p, actually. Yeah. Now, come along, everybody, or tea will get cold. I don't believe in milk first. Mary, pass the biscuits round, will you? Sergeant? Hey, What? What is a dishcloth doing on the tea trolley of a stately home? I'm sorry, I was using it to wipe out the cups. Well, get rid of it. All right, Mr. Paley. Yeah. Oh, hang on a minute, that's uh, my handkerchief. Oh. Thank you. To continue, Mary, pass the biscuits round, will you? No. Will everybody take milk? Yes. Rather. Yes, please. Uh. Uh, uh, thank you so much. It's not like you, Freddy, to steal a postcard. Well, I did, so I apologise. Oh, I think I will have a biscuit too. Oh, have mine, Lady Frost. I'm not hungry. And it's a Garibaldi, your favourite kind. That's very kind of you, Liz. Well, where were we? Wondering how a postcard of the house could turn up in foreign parts. Well, I don't see what all the argument's about. Uh, Freddy, do the sugar, will you? Righto. And that, I think you'll agree, is where we came in. Well, I can't even work out how she died. I mean, I still had the poisoned lump. That was a prop, I believe, Mr. Smith. But the poison might have been in the milk or the sugar in one of the biscuits, or just in the cup. But how did anyone know which cup she was going to use? Well, don't you remember? She always insisted on the only cup that wasn't chipped. Well, she made a right thing about it. Oh, yeah. Yes, that's right. I remember that. So do I. But how could anyone be certain she'd get the right cup? Because she was pouring the tea. Anyway, I didn't say it was in the cup. That's just one theory. County police can sort that out when they arrive. In the meantime, Mr. Feeling. Are you any good at playing women? Certainly not. Mm, pity. We'll have to cancel the play then. <laughs> and I should like to express my personal thanks to Lady Frost for dying. As now we won't have to watch any more of that dreadful play. <laughs> so Lady Frost has gone forever. And the one good thing about Lord Frost still being around is that David Frost won't be able to inherit the title. <laughs> now then, panel, is there any part of the action that you'd like to see played back? Jimmy, what would you like to see again? Uh, yes, the, uh, the part where Mrs. Flowers says she always chose the cup that wasn't chipped. Right. Lisa. I'd like to see the, um, the beginning of the row backstage between Lord and Lady Frost. Mm-hmm. Yes, Philip. Uh, that's the piece at the beginning where Mr. Smith was just about to put the supposed to poison uh, sugar lump in. Right. Trevor? Uh, I, I'd like to see the bit where the Lady Robinson took her husband's hanky and all that bit round the teacups. Huh? Right. OK, well, while we're sorting all that out, let's have some questions. One question each. Jimmy, a question from you, please. Uh, yes. Uh, the butler, Mr... It's the sergeant. Yes. Uh, have you ever done any acting before on the play? Well, a few years ago, you see, uh, when I was young, I thought I might like to go on the stage, but my father wouldn't let me see, because he said that them actor fellas were all very strange, sir. Thank God he stopped you. <laughs> 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 did you, uh, did you base that stoop on Charlie Drake? No, sir, I based that on, um, Charlie Law, actually, uh, oh. when I seen him in that picture, you know. Quasimodo. Well, Quasimodo. Mo mo yeah. Is that right? Yeah, that's Cosimo. It, yeah. No, that's yes, right. Mr. Lawton, I think you meant. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Lawton. Charles Lawton. Charles Lawton. Yes. Very yeah. fine. Yes. Next question, please. Lisa. Oh, um, uh, Lord Frost, Mr. Robinson, what exactly were you doing with those teacups? Oh, I was, I was arranging them so that it would be easier for my wife to pour the tea out when she had to do the next scene on the stage. Oh. That was all, because she, um, she was very particular about having them in a certain order, and I, I thought I'd just check them because I always like to make sure that she was all right, you know. Otherwise, 
<coughs> life was difficult at home. Oh, I see. Mind you, of course, that was your uh, flashback, wasn't it? Oh, yes, yes, yes. Yeah, so, you, in fact, you could be totally lying. Oh, he could be. Look yes. Could be, yes. Oh, yes, very easily. Totally. Fine. Good. <laughs> <laughs> Not just yet at the minute, thank you, Jimmy. We'll come to you in a second. Uh, Philip, right. one question. Uh, to ask a question, Mr. Smith. Uh, was it the 10p piece that he gave him for the postcard? Oh, of course it was, yes. It wasn't the sugar lump? No, it was 10p piece. Uh, uh, what was that again? 10 pence. Or 10 pps. That's ten right. <laughs> right. Thank you, my dear. That's yes. right. Right. Yes, uh, Trevor. Uh, well, I'd like to ask Cynthia. Uh, uh, you are Miss Miss Smallfront. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Let no, us. Let I, us I, right I, now I can get see this quite, quite clear. Right at the beginning, let us yes. have no personal remarks. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Nothing yeah. personal. Yes. Mr. No, no. I, I, I've got the point completely. I, yes. I, I see the point completely. You uh, have both. I, I would like to ask you. Um, were, were you genuinely amazed now when Mr. Robinson told the sergeant that he was going to drop you? I was absolutely stunned, yes. Really? Yes. Yes, <laughs> yes? well, you either were or else you killed the old girl for nothing, I suppose, really. <coughs> yes, the lady actually comes from Small Front, the name. Oh, I beg your pardon. Isn't Small Front. Yes. Uh, would I'm you like sorry. to tell the gentleman your name? Yes. Davenport, Miss Davenport. Davenport. Miss Davenport, yes. Sorry. She comes from the village of Small Front. Now, are we clear? Thank you. Yes, absolutely. absolutely. Thank you very much. <laughs> clear and to the point. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> yes, Jimmy, you wanted to ask a question. Uh, Lord Frost, you didn't see oh, wait a minute, hang on. Well, I'm so sorry. We'll come to you in a second. That's the buzzer for the first re replay, which is Philip Atkins. Philip, you wanted to see Mr. Smith, the postman, when he's in the play producing a rather mysterious sugar lump from his pocket. Keep watching the screen. Quite undrinkable. Oh, and as for the postcard, well, Freddy has already admitted that he stole it, and now he's paid the price. Ooh, ooh, it's very bitter. But I... No buts, dear boy. I know what your wife was hinting at. <coughs> and there she dies. Yes, Philip. No, it's okay, thank you. Nothing to say? Nothing. Right, Jimmy, you wanted to ask a question. You've been trying... Yes, Lord Frost, you didn't seem to be very upset at your wife's death. Oh, I was deeply, but it was just British phlegm. I see, you haven't got a little... <laughs> 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 you haven't got a little, little bit lined up on the side already, have you? No, uh, more of a cough, really. No, yeah. no, no. <laughs> <laughs> and I should point out that that is, of course... Why did you change the cups over on the... Tray? I was, as I explained, arranging it so that it was absolutely correct for my poor late wife. I think the shock is actually coming now, you know, I didn't <laughs> realise it. <laughs> yes, it often does come at this particular stage yes, of the yes, game, yes. yes. Uh, anyway, that is, good anyway. Uh, Jimmy, that is not, of course, Lord Frost, that is Mr. Robinson. Oh, is that in Mr. Fact, Robinson? Yes, in the play. Oh. Ready for the next replay? Uh, this is Lisa's. Uh, you asked for the meeting between Mr. and Mrs. Robinson backstage, between the scenes when he was fiddling with the tea trolley. What exactly do you think you're doing, Basil? What? Oh, uh, I was just tidying up the trolley for your tea pouring bit, dear. Mm, how very thoughtful of you, dear. Your guilty conscience is showing. That very short it was, but did it help you at all, Lisa? Yes, thank you, I think so. Would you like to ask a question appertaining to what we've just seen? Um, no, no? I think that... Uh, Fine, yes, Philip, you look if you want to ask something. Uh, Sergeant Grimes, I take it you do know how to uh, take a pulse of somebody? Or to find a pulse. I do, yes, but I was rather flustered that time. Thank you very much. Mm. It does happen to all of us, or even in the fire service. <laughs> <laughs> ah, yes. Touche, yes, very good indeed. Yes. Are you, are you speechless after that, Philip? I am, yes. You are. <laughs> right, anybody want to say anything? Trevor? Uh, no, no, I don't think I want to add anything at that point. Yes, I have another question. Um, I was asked Sergeant uh, Grimes. Um, Look, you seem to conduct an um, investigation very well, a, a serious oh, nature, a crime like this. Oh, it's for you to say that. Oh, that's right. <laughs> Thank you uh, very much. Oh. <laughs> Do you have, um, you can't have many serious crimes in your neighbourhood, in, in Small Front? Oh, no, you'd be surprised. You'd be surprised. Like last week, for instance, uh, Miss Titterson's stuff got taken off the line, <laughs> got nicked. We found out who didn't do. I'll grab it. He's the gardener down there. He's 97 years of age, I'm telling you. Oh, it wasn't Trevor Bannister. <laughs> no, 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 I haven't nicked him. Yeah, I, no, but we got her smalls back. Oh, no. Small. <laughs> yes, there, there are knicker grabbers. I wouldn't like to 
call it by them names, sir. See. No, well, I can. All right. It's in order. Yes, here we are. Another buzz, which means the third replay, which is yours, Trevor. Mm -hmm. uh, you asked for another part of the Robinson row off stage, in particular yes. when Mr. Robinson has his handkerchief taken away from him. Yes. Of course, that you'll be lucky to end up as a head clerk yourself. The bank doesn't like scandals. All right, darling, you've made your point. It won't happen again. Oh, and stop fussing about with that handkerchief. No wonder Mr. Fielding thinks you're over the top. Right, everybody, places, please, for the death scene. Just... Yes, Trevor. Yes, yes, oh, that's convenient. I've seen the film, so I know it's all before. Yes. Right, yes. <laughs> Any uh, questions? No, I, I, actually, I'd like to go back to the sugar. I'd like to ask um, uh, Mr. Mr. Smith, yes, right. uh, to fill it. Uh, I'm, I'm, are you absolutely convinced that that sugar lump was a prop? Oh, yes, it was a prop, as Sergeant Grimes said later yes. on. Yes. I mean, I mean, supposing somebody had poisoned that. I well, mean, they that could I have don't know, but it never got near a cup. Yes. Well, I'm glad it didn't get near a cup, actually, because it was made of celluloid, sir. I see. It would have floated, then. I'm afraid so, sir. Yes, well, they have a mistake again on my part, sir. Yes. Well, just to be on the safe side, I suggest we all don't drink any more tea for a while. Or <laughs> <laughs> yes, Lisa. Well, I just want to ask, um, Miss Fielding, um, what happened to your hanky? Yes, so, yes, so sort of in the beginning you, you had a sort of hanky and uh, what yeah, happened to it? Yeah. Uh, well, it's a very sweaty business, you know, directing amateurs. I must have, um, is it in the order? Oh, no, excuse me. Yes. Oh, thank okay. you. <laughs> <laughs> yes? Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't know what that buzzer was. It's uh, Jimmy Jewell's replay. Right. You wanted to see the part where Mrs. Flowers points out that Lady Frost always used the only cup that wasn't shipped. Yeah. But how did anyone know which cup she was going to use? Well, don't you remember? She always insisted on the only cup that wasn't chipped. Well, she made a right thing about it. Oh, yeah. Yes, that's right. I remember that. So do I. But how could anyone be certain she'd get the right cup? Because she was pouring the tea. Anyway, I didn't say it was in the cup. That's just one theory. Can't you please... Yes, Jimmy. How did you know that she always uh, chose the... The, chip, the cup that wasn't chipped. Well, I was going to say the chip that wasn't cupped. <laughs> <laughs> she, she liked to have the only one that wasn't chipped. You know, she thought there might be germs in the chip, so the rest of us had to have the one that was chipped. And you knew about this, did you? Oh, yes. So yes. you had plenty of opportunity when you were going round the back to put the poison in the cup. Ah, but you see, I wasn't on my own when I was going round the back because Cynthia was helping me with the trolley. I see. Uh, you had an affair with Mr. Smith, the postman. Uh, no doubt you met him on his early rounds, did you? Wait Sorry. a minute. Uh, I, I don't think that's quite true. Hey? You're not having well. it off with the milkman as well, are you? I've <laughs> <laughs> the time. It's worse than crossroads, isn't it? Except, <laughs> except that the acting's better. Yes. <laughs> uh, could you point out which acting is better? <laughs> <laughs> this acting's better. Oh, no. <laughs> yes. Yes, Mr. President Philip. I want to ask Mr. Fielding, whose uh, job was it to arrange to bring the teas and biscuits along? To bring them to the theatre? Yes, yes. I can't remember who brought them. I, I, I don't know. I, we arranged it among the cast at some early rehearsal. Uh, I don't, who was it who brought it along? Was it, was it, was it you, Mr. Yes, yes. yes. I, used, I used to bring the biscuits along. Yes, Lisa. Um, on the subject of biscuits again, um, when you gave um, Lady Frost the, the biscuit, she put it in her mouth and went and took it out again. Was she supposed to do that in the play? Oh, yes. Oh, she was? Yes, because she didn't like me, you see, and she didn't like the biscuit either. And so it wasn't a Garibaldi either, was it? Oh, no, no, it was You may wasn't. have noticed that. That, yes. was, a, that yes. was a mistake. That was my I mean. mistake. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so that's a squash fly biscuit, as I know it. Yes. 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 Uh, about the, these, these, the biscuits and the tea trolley that you took round. Yes. I mean, uh, the bis you obviously like a bit of a nibble, you know, <laughs> with your <laughs> biscuit. But it, this tea trolley, why was this trolley making so much noise going round the back? I mean. Oh, because it, it's on a wooden floor, you see. I see. It wasn't the little perforations in the wheels or anything like that. Or? No. No. It's, a, it's an extremely old building, isn't it? Oh, it is. It's an old village hall. It's yes. a very old village hall. Yes, I do appreciate yes. that. Fine, there are rifts you. and valleys between each plank. Yes, I'm looking at them all the time. <laughs> <laughs> Can I ask the target one? Yes, indeed. Oh. You said you'd no motive at the, at the vital moment, you're up, but you're on the phone to your wife at the, at the time. I never phoned my wife at the vital moment. Oh, what yes. did you say to her? <laughs> well, you see, uh, I just got a new recipe for uh, Lancashire Hot Pot from, uh, from our undertaker, Mr. Diaz. 
Well, he'd know, wouldn't he? He'd know, and uh, she forgot to put the carryway in it, so I... I that gives it more body, I forgot to put the carryway in, so I rang her up and said, uh, would you put the carryway in, please? And how did After you know so quickly she was poisoned? How did I know so... Well, it was quite obvious, sir. I mean, there was no gunshot, no, nothing like that. Unless she had a heart attack or something. Well, I mean, she could have had a heart attack. Oh, not Mrs. Robinson. She would never have a heart attack. And how did you know that there was an embezzlement at the bank? That's the local pub gossip, sir. Oh, and the local pub, pub gossip in, uh, in Small Front, sir, is absolutely very, very good indeed. I see. <laughs> you should do a stand-up spot. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, thank you very much indeed, Lisa. Oh, well, Mr. Fielding, did you know about this embezzlement at the bank? Yeah, well, yes, it, it was uh, mooted about the place. Oh, you don't know who it was? Oh, no, no, it's still under investigation. Uh, Subjudice, I think they call it. Oh, yeah. Pine. Or Sub Rosa. No, but she is. Yeah. Judice, yes, Rosa's <laughs> not here. <laughs> yes. Yes, Trevor. Uh, yeah, yeah, how, how long have you worked for um, uh, 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 Mr. Robinson? About four years. You've been, and you are the, uh, the chief clerk? Yes. You are, yes. yes. Have you had a happy relationship? Yes, yes, we get on. Yes. Quite, uh, I was just well. a bit worried. There was a reference about you playing a bird later on in the... I mean, I just, you know, whether these things cross yes, one's I, mind. I've fallen off too many I'll branches. I'll let it go I... again now. How could I just ask uh, Mr. Robinson, you're in your in matrimonial uh, emotional involvement um, outside of the bank, you're, um, you, you, you use the word rampant rather... Rather like it really applies more to you, doesn't it? Than it does in the play, really. Well, you drop your monocle as you said it. Are you in the habit well, of dropping your monocles as you say, rampant? I don't often drop my monocle, actually. No, no, I'm it was that. ready in the play. Yeah, ah, I, I did that. Yes, I was I making a dramatic point. I felt the line in between the, the two, you see, was a little touch yes, of reality. I, I, coming. I think you're barking up the wrong laurel there because. Ah, uh, yeah. mm -hmm. mm. Thank you. Not at all. Right, and thank you all. Thank you very much indeed. That's all we've got time for, I'm afraid. So, panel, I would now like you to write down on your cards who you think done it and any clues that you may have spotted. And uh, while they're doing that, here is one last clip from the action which has a small clue in it, so keep your eyes glued. Sergeant! Hey, I've seen as we're using real tea for this dress rehearsal. I thought I'd better make sure the cups were clean. How's Mr. Yeah. Fielding Why? taking it, I wonder? Uh, well, well, I don't know, I haven't looked. You know, I was hoping to do a spot of fishing. Well, yeah, he hasn't fallen asleep oh, yet, has he? Why not? Watch out, the queue's coming up. Yes, well, I warned you it was only a small clue. Let's see what the panel think. Can I have your card, please? <laughs> Fill it. Mm hmm. Lisa? Thank you. Jimmy. Right. Right, well, I have the cards, so nobody can change their minds. Right. Jimmy, who done it and why? Mr. Robinson. Mm hmm. And why? Uh, it's well, it's got something to do with the handkerchief. Mm hmm. <laughs> but don't ask me why, because I don't bloody well know. <laughs> <laughs> ah, there speaks an honest man. Lisa, who do you think done it? Well, I suspected them all at varying times, but uh, I. Uh, Decided on Mr. Robinson. Yes. And I had so many reasons for him. That's why I decided on him. Yes. I didn't have only a few for everybody. But your main else. clue. Was well, he knew that his wife had a bad heart, so poison would probably be instantly. Instantly. Well, that'll do for a start. That'll do. That'll oh, do. Fine. Right. Philip. <laughs> uh, Mr. Robinson also, because uh, of the love affairs. Mr. Robinson and his yeah, love affairs. Yeah. Yes. Carry on. And uh, he's also trying to get rid of his wife, so he could sort of either marry uh, Cynthia. <laughs> or uh, any other one who come across. What a nice thing to say, marry Cynthia, how nice he... <laughs> nothing nasty and sordid, uh, like a love nest in Surbiton or something like that. Yeah, well, he's a fireman, you see. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a gentleman. Yeah, Trevor, who done it? Well, and what? Uh, I'm a bit confused too now. I'd, I'd like to have asked Mrs. Robinson a question or two, but I think she's probably due back at Madame Tussauds soon. <laughs> um, I'd, I would just like to ask uh, Mr. Robinson one final question. Have you definitely finished with Cynthia? Oh. Absolutely, I'm exhausted. Right, I wonder if I could have a... <laughs> <laughs> I was just going to ask for the phone number, you know. Well, I, mean, uh, I think we can say, um, say Mrs. Robinson I... finished him. <laughs> well, I, I think, you see, it was Mrs. Robinson who killed herself accidentally trying to kill her old man. Because when she took her handkerchief, she took it out of the room with her and then it appeared on the trolley again. I see, you think it was suicide, in fact. It'd be accidental suicide, yes, I... in trying to kill him. I see, yes. 
death well, by it makes a change. It, it does, absolutely. It's a very interesting theory. Uh, uh, Lisa, I'd rather cut you off a bit sharpish. Was there any other reasons that you Well, I had thought? lots, yes. You I did? Mean, oh, yes. Well, that she was going to ruin him with divorce. No, She's written a new play. Go on. No, she knew about the embezzlement, and um, he knew about her, her only having that one cup that wasn't chipped. Bit safe, I think, three chip cups out of four. I mean, mm -hmm. I think it's appalling stage management. Um, and... I think that he poisoned the cup because it was after the sergeant wiped all the cups, so they were quite clean. Yeah. And I think he went along and put the poison in, and he was just sort of finishing off doing that, and he put his hanky back. So that's why it was quite safe for her to go run off with a hanky. Mind you, I was confused by the hanky. Yeah, I think <laughs> well, you were all. Think you all. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> right, well, there I think we have it. So now let's find out, shall we? Would the real whodunit or dunnits stand up, please? It's um, your handkerchief, I believe. Thanks, sir. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Thank you. Handkerchiefs all over the place. Yes, there were. Three or four more in the prop basket, isn't there? And the remarkable thing was that in rehearsals, I was wearing one too. You see, that's gone. <laughs> Well, this is a great shame because nobody got it right. We can't give a prize to Philip, sadly, because you didn't get it right. But Lisa, if you'd stuck to your guns and gone on the theory that you were going on about the handkerchief, that you would have got the answer right. Well, I, I was choosing between two of them because I have more clues for Mr. Robinson. That's, yes. why, I chose, that's why I went for him. Well, all, will become, between the two. all will become clear to you in a minute, I think. But for those of you who would like to confirm the details, here they are. Lady Frost, i.e. Mrs. Robinson, didn't use sugar or have a biscuit, and the milk was the same for everybody. So the poison must have been in her cup, and everybody knew which was hers. Now, as Sergeant Grimes was the last to touch the cups, and he'd wiped them clean, like none of the cast could have been responsible. And when the hanky turned up on the trolley, Mr. Robinson thought it was his, but his wife had already taken his. And so that the one on the trolley must have been the director's. Well, they, while they were all on stage, the director came through the pass door, he put the poison into the cup, dropped his hanky by mistake, and returned unnoticed to the auditorium. Clocks and trolley noises, biscuits, sugar lumps, etc., are all red herrings. So now you know. Now, next week we have a birthday party that goes off with a bang. Literally, the cake blows up. <laughs> now, in the meantime, it's good night from our panel, good night from our cast, and farewell to Mrs. Robinson. <laughs> Uh, as a postscript, may I add that uh, I was a bit suspicious of Mr. Smith, the postman, because uh, when I was a postman, my boss, Mr. Eric Barker, and I didn't see exactly eye to eye, my dears, simply because whenever he asked me what I was doing with the letters, I used to say, well, what does it matter what you do, so long as you tear them up? <laughs> Good night. <laughs>